Hello and welcome. This is Abdul Khan. I'm a technical, pro technical program manager for AVS certification R&D team. Uh, my focus is on the Alexa built-in devices uh, certification program. Mm -hmm. I manage the, uh, the authorized test labs, the certification processes, and also the, uh, the uh, Alexa qualification tool, which we'll talk about later. I'm gonna go through and talk about the, uh, the certification program for Alexa built-in and go beyond the, the, the scenes on our certification program and explain as far as now how to make sure that you're doing the right things to get through the certification process in, in as quickly as possible. Now, obviously, you know, you try and get through it in single pass. And so we'll try and increase the probability of getting there if possible. So the first thing I want to do is talk about the, the what Alexa built in and how does it fit in with all of the different Alexa programs that there are. There's obviously the, the Alexa skills, uh, the Just Ask program. There's the Works with Alexa that focuses on the smart home devices. And then we have the Alexa built in, which is the, uh, the area where I focus on and we'll kind of get into that specific uh, certification program. There are five uh, elements to Alexa built in certification. Uh, those are the acoustic testing, functional testing, music testing, and then of course you have the uh, user experience testing and the security testing. I'll describe each one of those in some detail uh, since we are limited in time. I'll not go into the gory details. So hopefully in one of the future tech talks we'll get into some more details as we need to. Acoustic testing is gonna focus on the work on voice devices specifically. Uh, there are other types of devices. There are the push to talk, uh, push to push to hold or hold to talk. All those other devices are there uh, they, that are also tested through acoustics, but we only check to see if it's able to hear correctly or if the delays are appropriate for the time you push a button and you are able to start talking and that the, uh, the, the device will transmit the addresses correctly. For this acoustic testing uh, examples over here, I'm gonna focus entirely on just the wake on voice devices. Uh, keep in mind that all Alexa devices that we build are designed with privacy in mind. We are committed to being transparent about how Alexa works so that customers are more informed of the decision about their privacy. We also work to put customers in charge of their privacy through the wake word engine, be able to control the microphone on off uh, button. And we'll talk more about the microphone button in the security side. And we also enable customers to be able to either retrieve or delete their own voice history that they may have with the interactions during the course of their conversation with Alexa. Our goal is to try and make the life easier and better for you, more enjoyable for you, as well as giving the confidence and the peace of mind that Alexa will do the same on, the, on her side. Let's move on to the, the, uh, the actual acoustic testing itself. Uh, and what is involved in acoustic testing? So I'm gonna go through a simple example of saying, Alexa, what is the capital of France? And then I'll go over the various components that are involved in, 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 in breaking that utterance up and getting through and, and how we validate each specific areas, uh, especially on the user side. I'm not gonna go that much to the cloud side. I'm gonna briefly talk about what the cloud does and how AQT interacts with it, but we'll get into the, into the actual utterance of how the device interaction happens. So as soon as Alexa hears the word uh, Alexa, it's gonna wake up and it's gonna start streaming the, the audio content, the utterance coming out from the user up into the, into the, uh, the uh, audio input processor. The audio input processor will continue until it hears the pause at the end of the utterance. So for example, if I say, Alexa, what is the capital of France? I have a pause at the, after France and will know that that's reached the end of the utterance and then it will start processing it and send it up to the cloud. But before we get there, let's talk about the actual wake word itself, the Alexa. So if the wake word wakes up and it hears the word Alexa correctly, we consider that to be an, a pass. If you say Alexa and the device does not wake up, then you know that there's an issue with the wake word. So we consider that as a false response. Now, over time, we may have a couple of hundred utterances. We determine how many times did it wake up, how many times did it not wake up. Now, these are all utterances that you have kind of gone through and verified that that should work in all different languages as well. So you may have you no know, utterances in all different languages. In that case, you wanna verify that, yeah, why did it not wake up? Or there's another example where it might wake up even when you see the word election. 
it sounds close enough to Alexa, but it assumes that you said Alexa and it sets it up to the cloud as a full uh, accepted wake word. In that case, we would consider that as a false accept rate because you want to make sure that the device does not send too many of those false accept rates up there to the cloud. Again, it's in violation of the privacy rights. The cloud is going to then also do a secondary evaluation, evaluation on that wake word. It's going to determine, did you really say the word Alexa? And it's also going to compare it against some radio advertisements, voice advertisements that might be through radio or through televisions or some tech talks. What am I going to be going in? So it's going to go through and make sure that is this a signature that I'm going to uh, throw away? Is something that I'm not going to kind of process because I know that this is a, a recording. So it's going to do that. It's also going to make sure that there is a uh, that you're not talking to somebody named Alexa in that house, in the household. You want to make sure that you are also sending up some sort of pre-roll as part of that wake word. So there's a typically a 500 second, um, 500 millisecond pre-roll. So it's half a second pre-roll that's sent up with the word Alexa. This is going to make sure that, you know, say like, you know, hello Alexa, how are you doing? Uh, things like that, where you have the hello Alexa close enough that the that the uh, wake word, uh, cloud verification will say, oh, this seems like you're talking to somebody called Alexa. I'm not going to process it. And therefore I'm going to consider this to be a false wake. Things like that are a lot of intelligence is put into this, making sure that the Alexa is only responding to truly real Alexa wake word commands. This makes sure that once it's processed through that, then it sends on to the, to the, uh, to the, Alexa speech recognizer, which converts the, the audio file, the WAV file into a text format. format. So on the, on the AQT side, we are going to actually take a look at the, the keywords rather than actually looking at the full utterance, like saying, you know, what is the capital of France? We're not going to look at that. We're going to look at just saying, did we hear the capital and did we hear France? In that case, yes. Then that utterance will match to what was said out of the user. So that's our test is one of the testing is to make sure that we actually heard that utterance, or at least the keywords in that utterance. Once it goes through the, the ASR, it goes through the NLU and gets processed, and then it goes through these, the text to speech translation and gets sent out back to the speaker to be played back uh, uh, and, uh, and to the, the device speaker. The device speaker will then say, you know, the capital of France is Paris. So all of this testing is done in a typically what we call uh, a test uh, noise environment. Now, in this example, when I went over, this is a silent environment. This is the silent noise scenario. So we want to also make sure that it actually is able to, to validate and go through and understand the utterances when you're in a noise environment. So we have a couple of noise scenarios that we also throw in in our testing and making sure that the utterances process correctly through the whole pipeline, which we actually call either the external noise or external music. So the external music would be something that may be playing from your entertainment system or your uh, external radio or a TV playing some, some music or, or even some talking, uh, uh, some news going on or something. And then the external noise could be anything, could be the microwave oven, machine noise or external uh, construction work or whatever. So that's typically how we kind of gauge what these noises are. And they are set at a certain level so that uh, there's enough of a, uh, decibel difference between the noise itself and the speech coming out of the, 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 the test system to make sure that the device is able to hear the utterance and the wake word. Then, you know, you may have a, another scenario. There's a fourth scenario, which we may have the device itself either playing music or is actually kind of generating some sort of uh, uh, talking to you, either reading a book or maybe having a conversation with it regarding the weather or whatever. In that case, you might want to interrupt it, which we call barging in. And in other sense, you know, you're kind of interrupting Alexa while it's doing something and saying, hey, Alexa, what is the capital of France? And then, you know, you want to make sure that it's able to respond also when you are talking to it while it's doing something in, in, uh, in the device itself. So that is also another test that we consider. And in this scenario, you want to make sure that the noise device playback is at a certain value and that we are actually talking at a certain volume as well so that uh, Alexa will hear you. It's a natural tendency for humans that when there's noise going on in the environment, we normally talk a little bit louder. So once you've gone through those four different scenarios, 
we have to go through and test them. Now, testing is a little bit harder because you've got to go through a lot of utterances. Now, if you do it manually, it would take a long time sitting in a quiet room and spraying all the utterances and then taking a look at the, at the uh, alexa.amazon.com history file and taking a look and saying, did I actually hear the utterance that I said and verifying it manually for each utterance? So if you're going to do it for, you know, for example, manual testing, we allow you to test with 30 utterances. So if you're doing it for 30 utterances for each noise scenario, so you got something like 120 utterances and then doing it over the you know, 13, 15 languages that you might support in that particular device, that's a lot of work. So we have an automation tool to do that for you, where we replace the human speaker with a uh, single board computer, which is a Raspberry Pi, connected to a powered speaker, which is uh, able to kind of generate utterances that we uh, pre-recorded and added to the system. So the AQT system is comprised of you know, five different uh, speakers. Uh, there are four speakers that we use for speech, and then one speaker that we talked about for external noise, external music, and so on. We can also use it for playing different kind of noise scenarios, depending on whether you're doing an automotive testing or you're doing a mobile testing or whatever, you know. Uh, there could be also the hearable testing, the close talk testing, where you may be testing things like uh, earbuds or earbuds, where it's headphones, where you may be walking around the street or, or, or so on. So I'm going to specify that we actually have uh, those four speech speakers set up in positions for near field, which is at 0.9 meters. Why 0.9 meters? Well, that's three feet in American. And being, being American, of course, we want to try and be also metrics sportive, so we convert three feet to exactly 0.9 meters. Uh, not one meter, 0.9 meters. And same thing with the nine feet, you want to make it 2.75 meters, not, not three meters, 2.75 meters. So that's where we kind of differentiate a little bit from the, from the, from the metric world. But that actually defines your far field for the, for, the, for the nine feet or the three, three meters or 2.75 meters. And then you have your near field, which is your 0.9 meters or the three feet meters. Uh, point, sorry, three feet uh, positions. So we have addresses coming in from either directly across from the device under test or up to the side. So we're making sure that you know, at both angles, the device is able to respond correctly. We can also do the same thing with, uh, with the uh, functional testing for music testing and any other testing that you may want to do. Uh, we have also custom utterances where you may be doing some custom testing that you may want to put in your noise files and you can do your own uh, set of utterances that you may want to test on. We support all different languages. As I mentioned before, we support, every, because AQT is language agnostic. It doesn't really care what's coming out of the speaker. So you could play any language you want. You can test in you know, any wake word you want because we allow you in, in part of a custom testing where you can put in your own wake word and you can put in your own on uh, utterances. You can also define what wake word you want to use as well. So AQT is pretty flexible and very durable for, for people to kind of you go and use. Now I get into the different areas of uh, elements of uh, Alexa built-in certification. So functional testing. Functional testing will verify that the core components that uh, comprise that make up the Alexa built-in device, like device registration, you know, you want to make sure the device is registered correctly under a user. Uh, barge in, we talked about the barge in where the device is kind of talking and you're able to interrupt it and start talking and ask it a question. Multi-turn is where you want to ask a device, you know, set a timer and it's going to ask you a question back, you know, for how long? And so you give it say 20 seconds or 20 minutes or whatever. And then you have shopping, which is obvious, of course, you want to, you know, you want to, you want to buy stuff from Amazon, hopefully amazon.com. And then you have alerts such as timers, alarms, reminders, that you want to make sure that are working. Those are some of the key features that all Alexa devices have to support. And then of course, there's reminders, there is notifications. You want to get your sports update. You want to get your news updates. So you have all of the stuff, which are the flash briefings. Then you also want to have support for routines, routines, things like, you know, for smart home, where you want to turn on the lights when, uh, when you say good night, or things like, you know, when you say good morning, you want it to go up and get your coffee maker turned on and so on. Those are all called routines. The routines are also, also verified. We are also making sure that if you lose internet connectivity in your home or the device router happens to kind of uh, get, uh, get corrupted or die on you, that the, the, the device fails gracefully and is able to recover gracefully and that you are not flooding Amazon services with uh, requests if something happens to die on your side. 
things like that. So we also test for that too. Uh, we also test for physical buttons on the machine, on the device itself, things like, you know, muting and making sure that the mute button works. And then of course the action button where you can, you know, you can bypass the Wacom voice Alexa and just push a button to say, you know, what was the capital of France? And then you also have your volume controls, the up and down volume controls to make sure that uh, those actually work as well. So not only there's the automated testing where you can test everything by voice, but you also the physical testing to make sure that you're actually testing things by physically touching the device and making sure that you're able to control all these different aspects of the device. We'll go into the, the next element, which is the music test requires you to actually go through and, and, uh, and verify that the music service providers actually are passing the specifications that are provided by the MSPs themselves, the music service providers, as providers themselves. They have to be verified independently to ensure that you know each MSP is different. They are using their own uh, they're using their own media players, and there's a generic media player which is the music skill kit. But uh, you know that's a separate thing. That's a different topic we'll get into later uh, or, or next or next podcast. The the music service providers some of them require very specific timings on 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 how long is the delay from the time you say Alexa play play uh, Beatles to the time it actually starts playing the content, uh, the, streaming the content from the Beatles album. So this is all measured and then we have to go through and make sure that they all verify itself. So we have special tools that AQT kind of calls on to make sure that we actually passing each one of those MSPs specific requirements using the tools that are provided by the music certification team. The music, music certification team is a separate team within within the, within the, uh, the Alexa world that will actually uh, validate and make sure that we are passing all of the music requirements before we approve a device for music certification. All right, let's get started on uh, on the UX experience uh, evaluation. So user experience is typically related, related to the audiovisual uh, experience across all types of Alexa devices. Uh, there's Alexa built-in devices from wearables to large screen TVs. You want to make sure that they are using that the developer is using the correct colors, the correct icons, the uh, audible notifications, as well as the voice chromes if it's a display unit, as well as the branding that goes on the Alexa built-in uh, accessibility on the on the learning learning screen or on the access to Amazon with uh, login with Amazon, and so on. So these are all kind of. Uh, uh, assets that you can download directly from the developer portal, developer portal for uh, implementation or integration into your device. Uh, some devices may want to have uh, a display to interact with the user. In that case, you know, there is a very rich visual in, uh, interaction, or in some cases you may have a single LED which will communicate either through the color of the LED or, and, uh, or the audible notifications that come out of the speaker. Uh, you know, either one is fine as long as the as the user knows exactly what's going on. Either it's going to be listening, use a listening tone, or it's going to be either uh, playing back an or uh, an, an audio response back to you, or it's going to go through and and give you a notification. It's either going to be a visual notification or a, an audible notification. Uh, the AVS portal will provide you with all of the tools, the assets that you can get. Make sure that you get get them into your device. Use those, and remember that when you when you are developing or designing a device, Alexa should feel conversational. This means that waking Alexa should be easy, interrupting Alexa should be supported, and the customer should be easily able to use, see, and understand what uh, Alexa's nonverbal uh, states are, like thinking, listening, and so on. Uh, go ahead and take a look at the UX overview that's up on the developer portal. The next thing I'm going to talk about is the uh, is the security testing. Uh, security testing is uh, is uh, uh, required is a mandatory requirement for all commercially distributed systems to implement and ensure that they have security measures, uh, reasonable security measures to prevent unauthorized access to the Alexa voice services, which includes you know the uh, the secure software updates, making sure that uh, there's there's uh, using the the uh, the cryptographic uh, uh, chip signing. On the on the on the updates, you're also using industrial industrial standard hard device hardening methods. So they're using chipsets that are that are relying on hardware-based security capabilities. 
you're also using uh, software or making sure that the software that you downloaded from, from Amazon, uh, some of the SDKs and some of the applications that you, you're using from Amazon are secure and they're protected from unauthorized access. And then last thing, uh, well, not necessarily the last thing, but one of the last things that I'm gonna talk about today is gonna to be the microphone. There is a requirement for you to have a physical microphone in which it will control the microphone on or off state. And that, with that, you'll need to also provide a notification, an LED, and, and typically it's a red LED to indicate that uh, the microphone is off. Uh, and this will describe, this will indicate to the customer or to the partner that, hey, the device is not listening. This is only a few examples. I mean, there's a whole list of security uh, uh, requirements that you need to go through and make sure that you are meeting and you're implemented. And you need to work with the uh, with the independent security expert. And we'll talk more about the authorized security labs that will help you get through and ensure that you are able to meet all of these requirements. I'm not gonna move and talk about the certification process. The certification process is standard across both what we do at Amazon uh, for our partners here, as well as at the authorized third-party labs. Authorized third-party labs are basically a representation of our certification test lab, uh, in essence. They can do all the certification testing for you, but uh, you know they, they have to send back the reports to us for, for review and authorization for, for branding and approval of certification. So initially, the device maker has to complete an intake form, let us know, you know the device, the lab know exactly you know what is being tested, know what languages are being tested, what is your launch date so that we know what the timeline is to get these things tested out and available to you. And also, you know, what is the, uh, the, the features that you support as well as the, uh, the, the musics that you support and so on. Once the device is received by the, by the lab, First thing they want to do is make sure that the device comes up and it's actually working. It actually powers up and that everything is updated. If there's an update in the software from the time it was shipped to the time it was received and everything is verified to be fully functional before we go into the step of uh, testing everything into, this, into the system. The, uh, the, the, the BBT is where we verify all this stuff. That's called the build verification test. The next thing we do is then go through all of the, the, the four pillars that we talked about not the security. Security testing, as I indicated before, is done by the, by the external lab. So we don't really focus on that. We only look for the report. And that report is mandatory in order to get past the certification phase. The four things that we go through and test are the functional, the music, the acoustics, and the UX. Uh, you know, most of those are automated and, uh, and some of those manual testing as well. And all of those kind of contribute towards the, uh, towards the uh, final review for approval. And then once it's approved, the certification operations teams in uh, Santa Clara will go through and, and make sure that the device gets uh, logged as certified. And then of course you can work with the branding people in marketing and get your device branded on the, on the website. All right, now that you're aware of the certification process, here are the, uh, the five pit top pitfalls that we, we've, uh, we've discussed uh, uh, as, as one of the topics here. Missing QA is one of the the top things that I put up at the top of the list is because a lot of people don't seem to focus too much on the device QA. They want to focus in on the certification aspect now. Okay, am I going to pass the Alexa built-in certification program or not? They want to kind of go through and say, you know, hey, you know, I want to test the entire product. I want to make sure that I'm testing for memory leaks, I'm testing for edge cases, I'm making sure that I'm testing for things that are not going to be part of the Alexa built-in, but are still part of the user experience. So that's critical. I want to make sure that all of that stuff, all of the stuff is tested through end to end about the, on the product itself and not just focusing on the Alexa built-in certification program. The next thing is the, the music certification. Music certification is a uh, time and it uh, requires a really good network connectivity. And you want to make sure that there is stable networks. And if you're using a VPN to connect to services that are only accessible in, in US, for example, uh, then you want to make sure that you have a good stable uh, network connection, good stable VPN connection, if you're doing a remote connection to a, a service provider like uh, SiriusXM in the US, and that you have a, a, a network or router that's not going to be flaky and, and break down and cause you to fail music tests just because you had a latency issue in the delay in one of the routers. Design guides are here also to support you. That's the third item on my list, which is you now making sure that you're using the AVS design guidelines. 
they are there. There are several pages. There are you know, quite a lot of, uh, I think more than 50 to 20 pages on how to design your products using Alexa built-in with detailed instructions, with source code, with uh, information there that you can go off and create, an, create a really good uh, design and not use the, the test specifications as a guide on how to design a product. The test specifications are changing all the time. The design guidelines are normally static and will not be changing unless we're adding new features to it. To go together with the design guidelines, there's the AVS SDK, right? Uh, we have the SDKs that are available. There are a total of you know, five SDKs up there that's available for you to use. Uh, go ahead and utilize those SDKs for the appropriate devices that you want to build. You know, they are fully tested, fully certified, and they will help you get to the end product in a much quicker and more reliable than, than trying to do it on your own. And lastly, you know, uh, I talked about the, the Alexa qualification tool, the AQT tool. Use that. That's a very useful tool. You know, you can get that uh, set up in your lab using, an, you know, all you need to do is get an NDA signed with, with Amazon and uh, contact uh, somebody in, in Amazon to get access to the tool and we'll get you set up. And uh, this will help you kind of get through the process quicker. It'll help you create a very good user experience uh, if you have a good quality product at the end. I'm gonna now talk about the, uh, the authorized third-party labs. Uh, the authorized third-party labs are there to kind of help you get through your uh, security certification testing that requires you to provide a special certification, sorry, a, sort of, uh, a specialized security uh, report that allows you to get through the Alexa built-in certification. It's a mandatory requirement, therefore try and utilize, and you'll have to utilize one of those security labs, so you leverage them. And then of course you have the authorized test labs which are located all over the world and they will help you get through your testing. If you do not have an acoustic chamber, leverage them for your acoustic testing. Uh, use them for your certification testing because they're local, maybe in your area where you can go and work with them directly and get devices to them much quicker than you could when sending it to Amazon. If you're an Alexa developer and thinking about building with Alexa, I recommend checking out the uh, alexa.design slash Slack. The Slack channel is a community of all types of developers that are building with Alexa. There are community of product teams. There is a community of uh, support teams. There is uh, global developers and there's uh, designers. And it's a great place to connect. You now go ahead and check it out. And I hope you have learned something in this tech talk and you've been inspired to go up and build a, a great you know, Alexa built-in device. And uh, if you are you know, able to do something that will help, help our customers to have a better experience building this device, it'd be great. Uh, we have created a survey, uh, click in the chat window and, uh, and give us your feedback. Uh, it'll be really you know, uh, great to hear back from you as far as you know, what you thought about uh, this presentation and what else you'd like to hear from us. Good luck and thank you for, for listening. Bye-bye.